What's going on, everybody? This is Brian from SneakerFiles.com. Recapping the news from yesterday. Like always, we post it first on SneakerFiles.com, and then we take it to YouTube. This video is probably 80% Nike news. There's a ton of stuff uh, to cover here. Also, we have a little bit of Adidas and Lonzo Ball's first signature shoe. But without wasting too much of your time, let's jump into the news. The Adidas Pure Boost will debut in a bunch of colorways for spring and summer 2017. Here we have what's being called Night Cargo. Featuring Night Cargo through the uppers as well as black accents, black covers the boost midsole and outsole. Dropping May 31st, retail will be 140. Yesterday, Adidas unveiled the Adidas Pure Boost DPR. I'm going to read an excerpt from Adidas's press release, which may show you where they're coming from on the new Pure Boost model. All over the world, runners are exploring cities and expressing their own creativity in the routes they chose and challenges they take on. We wanted to build something purely designed for the type of runner and love the idea of creating a more adaptive running experience. This led us to design an 8mm heel to offset that when paired with the signature boost technology allows the feet to sit lower, deeper, and much closer to the streets. They're constructed with a one-piece engineered circular knit upper, once again using a hill counter that enhances support. Following is a wider forefoot which helps in stability. Other details include a boost midsole and stretch web on the outsole. For the initial drop, we have three colorways. One is done in gray, solid gray. The other in core black, core black, running white. Last but not least is collegiate navy, dark navy, warning orange. The three are set to drop on May 18th. Retail will be 150 while the LTD version will cost you 170 Adidas Consortium Sneaker Exchange is expanding. This time, Sneaker Boy and Wish ATL are coming together for an Adidas Consortium pack. Two pairs will debut. One is the Adidas Pure Boost, the other is the Adidas Climacool. Inspiration from the two is Jellyfish. So on the surface, it is an all white base, but when the lights get turned down and they're charged up, they glow in the dark. They're first going to release at Wish and Sneaker Boy on May 13th, and then a wider release will take place at additional consortium retailers on May 20th. Retail price for the Pure Boost is 160, and the Climacool will cost you 150. The concept behind it is dope, I do like that, and I do believe that both will sell out. They're probably both going to be limited. Sneakers and Stuff is getting an exclusive Adidas NMD pack. This is known as the Adidas NMD R1 Prime Knit Data Mosh Pack. For those that are wondering what data mosh or data moshing is, it's a process of manipulating data of media files to receive visual and auditorial effects when the files are decoded. I honestly am not sure what that means 100%, but if you do, leave a comment below, fill me in a bit more. But onto the shoes, one features clear aqua and lab green, while the other features vapor steel and collegiate orange. The two are releasing exclusively at Sneakers and Stuff's retail stores as well as online on May 12th. Retail price is 180 each. Now, it's hard to believe that this is an exclusive to them. I'm not doubting them. I just think that the initial drop will be an exclusive to Sneakers and Stuff and then a wider release will come down the line. I'm not 100% positive on that, so don't wait on it. If you like them, make sure to cop. We have a handful of Nike Air Vapor Max news today, but first up is two pairs that are a part of the day to night collection so up first we have the violet dust which is a women's exclusive release and it features violet dust and plum fog throughout so this is a women's exclusive release if i didn't mention it already they dropped june 1st retail is 190. the second from the collection is being called college navy and they feature college navy black and game royal throughout now this is a men's release and as you can see the shades of blue cover the upper while black lands on the swoosh and midsole and it appears that the bubble air sole is blacked out also dropping june 1st for 190 just like what nike sportswear did with the silver bullet they're going to do for the metallic gold nike air max 97 they're going to drop a full collection up first we have the nike air max jewel which is a women's exclusive release and they feature metallic gold varsity red black and white so the color blocking once again resembles that of the iconic nike air max 97 drop in may 18th retail will be 180. next is the nike air max 95 which is also a part of the collection and i'm not sure if it's the images but the metallic gold use actually looks a bit more dull than the jewel and upcoming will be the air max plus and you'll see but they also feature metallic gold university red and white and dropping may 18th for 160. 
Last but not least, to showcase to you today is the Nike Air Max Plus, which is also a part of the collection. Now, they do feature kind of a dull shade of gold across the uppers, but there's a lot of that metallic gold hits, which brings them to life. And to me, this is my favorite pair, aside from the Nike Air Max 97 from the pack. Also dropping May 18th, retail will be 150. This marks the third time that we've reported on the Nike Kyrie 3 in black and yellow, and nothing has changed other than the fact that Nike has issued official images, which means a release is coming soon. We already knew that. They're dropping May 11th, retail is 120. Really quick, black across the upper, speckled detailing, yellow used, white on the outsole. And that's pretty much it. Expect this pair to um, sit on shelves, although they are clean, they're dope. Keeping things simple is the Nike Kobe AD NXT white black. And as the nickname may suggest, they feature white and black. So predominantly done in white, we have black on the Nike swoosh, and actually there's orange used on the insole, and completing the look is a translucent outsole. Dropping May 12th, retail is 200. If you haven't noticed by now, Nike is packing May up with a bunch of Nike basketball models, and that's obviously due to the playoffs going on. I know most of you are not feeling the Nike KD10, but for those that are, we do have a detailed look and a size 11 is available on eBay. So all that's really changed is the color description, which is now official because there's an image of the box label and that is white chrome pure platinum. So the nickname being attached is white chrome. Using predominant white, which covers the fly knit upper, we have a suede overlay that acts like a cage and then chrome that lands on the Nike swoosh as well as KD branding. On the outsole, we have a new circular traction and basically that's really the only big difference here other than the fact that they are a low top but it just looks like a Nike KD9 Elite low top. Dropping June 5th, retails 150. Um, I'm actually going to be doing a review of these very soon. Um, it should be up either over the weekend or Monday. Um, good friend of mine got these in so be on the lookout for that as well. A new Nike Kobe AD has leaked and the nickname is Big Stage. So the shoes resemble that of the Nike Kobe 5 Big Stage that dropped back in 2010. However, Nike Basketball will debut a full collection. I know that there's a Nike Kyrie 3 that will resemble a similar colorway. And as you can see, it features white, metallic, gold. Now for this pair, they feature predominant white and then we have metallic gold, which lands on the swoosh, hill, and Kobe branding. Completing the look is gum on the outsole. Dropping June 3rd, retail will be 160. Although the Nike KD10 is on its way, the Nike KD9 Elite still has a couple colorways to drop. First up, we have the Nike KD9 Elite known as Racer Pink. So the shade of Racer Pink covers pretty much all the shoes, but if you look closer on the fly knit, it actually has shades of orange and various other colors, which has kind of a multicolor theme. Following, we have orange that outlines the Nike swoosh, white on the midsole and outsole. Dropping May 15th, retail will be 150. New images of the Nike PG-1 Glacier Gray has landed and they are available on eBay. There'll be a link in the description below if you want to check it out. But this is the overseas edition which uses an XDR outsole and what that is is it's a more durable rubber outsole that's issued in China because a lot of people play outdoors there. But the color blocking and everything else is the same. We have Glacier Gray which covers the uppers and Armory Blue which is accented throughout. Dropping May 19th retail is 110. A handful of first looks took place today and here is the off-white Nike Air Vapor Max collaboration. Using mainly black throughout, we have white which lands on the swoosh tongue and the obvious air in quotations right by the heel and the swoosh has like an unfinished stitching going on. We only have the one image so it's really hard to see what else is going on with the shoe but expected to drop spring, uh, rumored is in May, as early as May but we'll have to see. Like always, more details on the way. There's a lot of Nike Air Foam Posits dropping this year, and of course, it celebrates its 20th anniversary. Here, we have the Pro Edition, and this pair is being labeled Island Green. Now, right off the bat, you may notice that this pair looks familiar to you, and that's because it resembles the Nike Air Foam Posit Pro Electric Blue that dropped back in 2011. So the difference here is the Nike swoosh on the side is actually chrome, we have a blue tinted outsole and then the swoosh which is kind of by the toe that is blacked out. The shade of blue, well I should say green in this case, is a little bit is slightly different. Um, overall though I, I'm not a fan of them. I think the chrome swoosh throws it off but that's just me. Doesn't matter what I think. Also the 
image in the thumbnail is a Photoshop, but this image pictured here is the actual retail release. Dropping sometime in July, we don't have a set release date, but retail will be 230. So we have our first look at Lonzo Ball's first signature shoe. He has yet to play a single game in the NBA. This is known as the Z02. Now, this is being produced by Big Baller Brand. That is his dad's brand known as LeVar. Now, I don't want to get on to LeVar and his antics and what he's done in the media. That's a whole different topic, and that could be a very long video at that. Now, I was going to give him some credit. First off, he pitched this idea to Nike, to Adidas, to Under Armour, and he got turned down and for good reason because what he wanted was to license his brand to whatever brand signed his son now the credit here i was going to give him was the fact that instead he decided to just release them and become independent and just stick it under the big baller brand but i really can't even do that because the shoe is a total ripoff we have the base of what appears to be a kobe model the heel which is taken from the air jordan 3 and then the midsole appears to be boost also the way the translucent outsole comes up onto the midsole that even kind of looks like james harden's signature shoe it gets worse from here the z02 prime retails at 495 dollars but if you wear a size 14 or 15 the price jumps up to $695. They're also selling what they're calling the Z02 Wet, which includes a special box with LED lights along with Lonzo Ball's autograph, and that will cost you $995. The idea here is to match performance with high-end luxury shoes, and that was from LeVar's brand. Um, honestly, the two aren't going to mesh well. It, this price is just outrageous. I mean, you have kids that want to wear your signature shoe. I'm not saying this one, but let's say a LeBron James, and that costs $175. And Nike had to lower the price from $200 just because it was just a lot. And $175 is still a lot, but $495, come on. So a kid can wear them and tear them up. These are just not cool. I mean, the overall look isn't bad. It's just the price tag. It's everything combined, to be 100% honest. And it's hard to avoid LeVar's antics and things like that in the media to just make me not like these. However, they're all the kids, they are talented, and I will give them that, and I do hope that they do well in the NBA. Um, if you're interested in buying them, they're available now on pre-order, but they're going to officially ship out on November 24th. Also, they released what they're calling the Z02 slides, and that will cost you 220 And that recaps the news. Like always, we post it first on sneakerfiles.com, and then we take it to YouTube. From this video, what I like enough to buy? Nothing. Um, other than the Nike Air Max plus metallic gold, but I don't even think I'm going to get those to be honest um, Just a lot of stuff releasing, but that's really it um, as you can see no Jordan brand news first time in this sneaker news segment that there hasn't been anything from Jordan brand a bit weird I thought maybe at the last second something would come up, but nope but leave a comment below, let me know your thoughts, what you liked from this video, dislike, and your thoughts about Lonzo Ball's first signature shoe. Thanks for watching, stay tuned to sneakerfalls.com, and if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe.